Hi everybody, this is Tana with Proverbial Homemaker and today we are going to do a lot. We're going to cover a lot of information. Um, I have been getting great questions about our newly updated um, homeschool planning system so I'm going to share that with you today and also give you guys a little bit of a peek inside how I do homeschool planning in our homeschool. It's changed over the years. It's gotten more relaxed and uh, people are always curious about how that's going. You can see I left you some links to the new um, planning system so you can take a look at that. And uh, in a little bit, I'm gonna explain to you uh, how that it works. In a little bit, I'm gonna flip it around and actually show you all the pages so you can see what's involved. All right, so every year we update the planner that we have. It used to be called the Relaxed Mom Homeschool Planner and eCourse. And it came with a customizable printable planner and a e-course that walked you step by step through how to set up a flexible home homeschooling system for yourself. And uh, where this came from, the idea behind this is that I am a um, organizationally challenged homeschool mom. <laughs> so I had really hard time the first few years of my homeschooling journey really finding a groove with homeschool planning and tracking and being able to stick through it, to stick to it. I could come up with beautiful elaborate planning systems and you know make them just amazing with all the bells and whistles but actually implementing it was a huge challenge for me. I'm a homeschooling mom of six. I have six kids ages 10 and under. Um, I don't have a lot of time for tracking and maintaining and you know keeping up those elaborate planning systems. And I found that I would end up not using most of the planners that I had on hand, and that um, somehow it just ended up stressing me out and becoming more of a burden to me than actually helping me to thrive in my homeschool. So I started from scratch and built a system that I knew would work for me, that, did, that was very minimalist, it just recorded the things I needed to record, it helped me plan and prioritize and keep my vision straight, help me be prayerful about my homeschooling and that's where the relaxed mom homeschool planner came from and so that's been out a couple years so many homeschool moms have really enjoyed that and found that to be the perfect fit for their personality and their style and each year we update the um, year at a glance you know so we make sure that the the most current uh, calendar is in the planner this year however we added some pages we added some things because as the years have gone on I've um, kind of evolved how I plan and actually I've become more relaxed in my planning so I wanted to provide those new pages and the new way of tracking that I've been using for you so that you could have those and the old pages are all still there I'll show you all of those in a minute we also updated the calendar and we gave it a fresh new look so now you can um, go through and there's beautiful flowers that our designer put in and they're just gorgeous so I'm gonna give you a, a look at that um, so I want to mention that the and we've also rebranded it. Instead of being called the Relax Mom Homeschool Planner, we gave it a name that more aptly fits what it is for. And so it's called the Rhythms and Routines Homeschool Planning System. It still comes with a customizable planner. Every If you've purchased the planner through my store directly, you always get an email from me every year with the newly updated system. And usually it's just the um, calendar, but this time we've revamped a whole lot. So you should have received an email already with the updated planner. If you didn't receive that email or if you purchased it some other way, like through a bundle sale or whatever, I don't have any way to know who those people are. So you can always just email me at tana at proverbialhomemaker.com with the proof of purchase for wherever you bought it from and I will make sure you get the newly updated planner, okay? And that's true for the rest of you. If you buy the planner now, you will get all the future um, updates emailed to you free of charge. Um, and it still comes with the e-course. Now the e-course has not yet been updated to show the new changes to the planning system and it just needs to be um, refreshed a little bit. So I'm going to be working on that through August. So if you have the e-course that goes with the um, system that you bought, then you will begin to see those changes happening in the um, e-course and it's in Teachable. So you should have all those links sent to you. Please feel free to email me and message me if for whatever reason you don't and I'll make sure you get set up if you've already purchased it. Um, so anyway, you'll see those start to roll out in August. So from now all the way through the end of August, you can get the Rhythms and Routines Homeschool Planning System that comes with a customizable planner and the e-course and the Loop Scheduling Workshop for 20% um, off using code RRSYSTEM. 
Okay, so that is live now. And to enter the giveaway right now during the session, during this Facebook Live session until um, August 2nd at 11.59 p.m. EST, you can enter to win both of those systems. All you have to do is comment during this Facebook Live or up until the um, end date of the giveaway to, with a question about either of those products that you have or a question for me about those products or just let us know what your biggest challenge is with, home, with uh, homeschool planning. I would love to just hear what your struggles have been and even what your wins have been and how things are going for you this year. All right, so let me see. Yes, check your email, Annie. <laughs> if you don't have it, feel free to contact me. I'm gonna make sure that I have, um, let's see, that I have you guys all up here in case I get any questions so I can catch them. Okay, so I was just gonna give you guys a little bit, just a really brief overview of how I do homeschool planning. You know, this is the time of year when lots of homeschool moms are scrambling to kind of figure out what they're gonna teach their kids this year, what to change from last year, how they're going to uh, put it all together in a plan that works for them, how to organize their lesson plans, all of these things. And I love getting into those conversations with um, homeschool moms because everybody has different needs and styles and personalities. Um, but the ones that I'm most interested in reaching out to with this planning system are the ones who have just been frustrated with all the empty check boxes that never seem to get checked off, all of the lesson plans that never seem to get done, um, who just get really frustrated with um, trying to actually implement their plans because that's where I was and so it's really important to me to be able to reach out to you and say you can totally do this. You may not have a uh, strict schedule and let set like some other homeschoolers do. You may not have elaborate planners that you tick off all the check boxes with stickers and all this stuff. That's okay. Everybody does things differently. There is a way to find your groove with homeschool planning and I'm just gonna give you an example of how I do mine. It will either spark your own ideas or you can you know, purchase my system and give it a shot and see how that works for you. It always takes us all a little bit of um, trial and error to find the right fit for us, right? Okay, um, let's see. Okay, so I've got you guys on here. So real quick, the way I do homeschool planning, you know, when I first started out with homeschooling, I tried really hard to set a schedule um, for our home and our homeschool. And um, I had tried some of the things like, you know, the elaborate, um, I don't know if it was elaborate, it was simple, but it was complex for me anyway. But having the 15 minute increments or the half an hour increments and color coding and all this stuff and figuring out exactly when we were gonna do each subject each day, um, or maybe even using block scheduling a little bit when that didn't seem to pan out. And at the end of the week, I always felt um, defeated. I always felt like I didn't complete the things I wanted to complete, like I was always behind. It was incredibly frustrating. And so um, I ended up switching to a different way of doing things. First of all, right around this time of year, I spent a lot of time, and I mentioned this in my last Facebook Live, I spent a lot of time evaluating how the last year went, you know, taking a real honest look, talking to my husband about what he'd like to see going forward in our homeschool. Um, you know, maybe he sees some holes I'm not seeing, or maybe he sees some, you know, ways that we can adjust our family life or our homeschool to fit our family life or whatever. So we have those conversations. We talk about our vision and um, we revise our vision statement if needed. And I will show you guys that in a minute. We spend a lot of time talking about our children's goals and their um, character issues that we want to work on and you know just the overall big picture is what we focus on and then I take that information I think I do kind of an inventory of whatever curriculum or resources we have on hand and I uh, figure out what we definitely need to buy for the year and what would be kind of nice to buy for the year but we don't really need and I write all of that out so I have a visual of it and I can see where we are and then I work on each kid working on a plan for them and it really basic. It doesn't have to be complex, but I think about their character and um, like I said, their character, their academics, their life skills, all of those things. And I flesh out some goals, some high level goals, and those will direct how I plan our upcoming quarters. So once I've kind of got those big picture things set, um, I do a little bit of more detailed planning. And for me, detailed planning means 
I take our year at a glance. I briefly, you know, sketch out, okay, these, these, this is when we're taking vacation. We do a year round schedule. So I block off the things we're taking vacation for or the holidays. Um, I block off, you know, if there's any large blocks where we don't have any breaks, I go ahead and block off some breaks in there just to kind of keep things um, running smoothly, but where we do have some breaks. And then I take that information and I look at the resources and the plans, the overall resources and plans that we have. So like, for, for example, I might take my math for my fifth grader and sketch out, okay, this is how many lessons is in the math. If I did this many lessons a week, um, how, when would we be done? And so I take that with my year at a glance and I just kind of briefly count out you know, when would I be done at the end of the first quarter, the second quarter, the third quarter, and the end of the year. And that way I have just milestones for the year for that particular subject for that child. And that's what I do. I just sketch those things out. I only do that for certain subjects where I care if they finish um, the whole thing in a year. And most mostly that's just math. Um, sometimes language arts, depending on what I'm using, sometimes history, but mostly it's just math. That's all I care about as far as staying on track. So I sketch all those out, I write a few notes, and then the next level of planning for me is quarterly. So I take whatever the next quarter is, I only do it quarter by quarter, so I take the next quarter, and I'll show you this in the planner too. And I, again, just sketch out, these are the field trips we wanna take, these are the units we wanna look at, these are the uh, vacations that we're going on that I wanna either work around or um, turn into homeschooling experiences, because <laughs> I do that, or whatever it might be. And then um, I sketch all that out so I have it in view when, I, when we go into that quarter. And that's, for me, that's pretty much it. I might spend a little bit of time taking whatever I sketched out there and putting some things on my digital planner, or, or not my digital planner, my digital um, calendar. We just use iCal as a family um, calendar, so I don't use a paper calendar. So I might put in some field trips or, you know, put a note in there saying, hey, you were gonna be done with this part of math by this date and just so I have a reminder or whatever, but that's basically all I do for planning. And then what I do now, it used to be I tracked everything we did every week and I no longer do that. What I tend to do is I use resources that lend themselves to just doing the next thing. And actually I think a lot of curriculum is set up that way. A lot of resources are set up that way and a lot of methods really are set up that way where we can just do the next lesson. We don't have to really detail out any elaborate plans or anything, we just do the next thing. So what I do is now I have a piece of paper that has the month for, and on that paper for that month for July, for example, I will just write down everything that we actually did. Because I don't know that I care anymore <laughs> about what I planned on doing when I had, you know, these lofty dreams of what we were gonna do in July and then didn't accomplish. What I really wanna know is what we did. So I write down everything we did that is educational for that month, throughout the month or at the end of the month, it doesn't matter. So I have a record of what we accomplished. And that is what I do. So our uh, planner, which I'm gonna flip around and show you here in a second, goes through all of those, plus some variations depending on your particular needs and styles. And I'm gonna show you how you can use it to fit your needs, okay? So let's see, do we have any questions? I see somebody. It goes up so quickly, I can't see what you guys are all saying. <laughs> uh, you never turn vacations into homeschool experiences. <laughs> oh, I totally did. In fact, this, this year, for, we take our vacation in September because why not? Nobody else is doing it, so we get you know more access to things and you know nobody's crowding us. Um, but this year, we're actually going to a homeschool outdoor school as a family for our vacation. It's like a homeschool mom's dream come true. Plus I don't have to cook. <laughs> I don't have to clean really. It's amazing. I'm so excited. <laughs> My kids are getting homeschooled all at the same time. All right. Okay. So I'm going to flip this around and show you. If you guys have questions, let me know. I'm having some trouble here with this, but um, I will come back and talk to you guys about it later. Okay. So I'm going to Let's see, Teresa says, keeping track of what's done instead of what to do leads to a more positive mindset. It really does. And I am amazed when we start, when we made that change, I was amazed at how much we did that I wasn't considering as an accomplishment because it wasn't on my plan. And that's crazy. So now we actually, with the system that I've 
done for us, we not only see more of what we actually accomplish, the real educational experiences that we write down, but I actually get way more done. We get a lot more done during the course of a homeschool year with a more relaxed approach to planning and um, going year round, and we do a four day week as well. So it works out really well for us. All right, let me turn this around. This is the Rhythms and Routines homeschool planning system. The e-course that I have that goes with this goes through this in a lot more detail, and this is a fresh version. So you're not gonna see all my notes. I wrote a few things in here, but a lot of it I have to transfer over. I'm still kind of sketching out in my notes, and then I'll put in here. Okay, so we've got beautiful new design too with all these flowers, makes me happy. All right, so what we do is we put these all in a three ring binder. Um, we have our homeschool vision. This is what I mentioned that we spend a lot, we spend a lot more time up front on this vision stuff. And the reason is because homeschooling is hard and it takes a lot of focus and intentionality and effort. And often I am coming back and revisiting our homeschool mission and our goals because we are often faced with these you know, decisions about should I change the curriculum? What's this child's issue with character? Should we take on this activity? Whatever it is. And we always run it through the filter of our vision statement. So this is, you know, it might seem a little bit um, you know, out there and not concrete enough, but it's actually incredibly helpful. So this is like our third or fourth iteration of this particular vision statement. Um, I'll post you guys a picture so you can read it if you're interested. All right, so this, most of these pages are the same. I'll let you know if anything's different. We have capturing the big picture. So after we write our vision statement, or a lot of times while we're writing it, we'll write down these basic categories. Why do we homeschool? What's important to us? What is our main goals, or what are our main goals? What's our main approach to homeschooling? What did we learn from last year? You can see we've been working on that a lot, and what are our notes? This is, I, we actually take this with us sometimes on date nights when we're discussing our homeschool um, for the coming year. And we go through these things and we talk about them and we figure out, okay, what's our game plan? What, you know, how can we keep our focus and our priorities? We go through each, I haven't filled these out yet, but we go through each child and talk about their goals. So I have um, five in here right now. So here's academic, character, life skills, and other. And again, these are ones I talk through with my husband, and sometimes we talk to our children, the older ones, about um, what they would like to work on in those areas. Okay. Then, like I said, we go through our curriculum and take an inventory. We write down all of the haves, the needs, and the wants. And that really helps us to get a grip on um, the real. A lot of times, you know, our bookshelves can get stacked or our you know, hard drives can get clogged with all the things that we forgot we had and we don't really need to get anything new or, you know, maybe we tucked it away and we forgot about it. So it's really important to write down what we have. We write down what we need, which is a, usually a pretty short list. And then my want list is always really big. <laughs> but anyway, this is the new um, update for the calendar. We have the 2018 on this side, 2019 on this side. And I always punt, hole punch both sides because I like to move it around and I don't want to have to do that later. But we just, it's just a schedule at a glance. This is the one where I'll sit down with the math curriculum, for example, and say, we haven't even blocked these out yet, but I block out the vacations and then we um, figure out, okay, how many, le how many weeks do we need to finish this math curriculum? And we spread it out. And um, so that's how we do that. We also, I put these note, these little flags here to remind me to tell you guys stuff and I forgot why I put them there. That's <laughs> so not helpful. Let's see, I think the reason is because I wanted to show you something. Right about here in the planner, you will see the weekly routine pages and we've changed these a little bit. One of the best parts of um, figuring out how to schedule our homeschool from scratch, like I mentioned, instead of having rigid schedules, is to have a really good routine, a flexible routine that we can change and tweak when we want, but something that's really good and that becomes a working document for helping us to find our groove as a family and in our homeschooling. So this is what the, the old one looked like. I mean, it's been redesigned, but this is the basic layout of the old one. It has this, the um, subjects here. 
and it has the days of the week here and there's an editable version of this in the planner as well. So that worked really well for me for a long time. I ended up changing it, however, and have been using a different format this past year that has worked better for me. So I included that as well. And this is what this one looks like. You can include it in your planner. I actually put this up on my wall in front of my planner because I have a, like a little um, laptop desk that I got from Ikea. And so I just lay this planner out um, open. I'll show you where I have it open a little bit later, but I lay this out to um, keep track of my records and everything. And then this is actually up, tacked up in front of it. So I always have a weekly routine in view. So what we do now for our weekly routine is I write down my rhythm for the week, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. Um, you can obviously use different days of the week there, but I just sketch in what to expect those weeks. Um, that really helps me because every once in a while we'll have a certain day where it's eaten up by some extracurricular activity or you know we do a four day week so one of those days of the week is always a home blessing day. So I just sketch those out. Over here I put the priorities that I'm currently working on and I want to keep in mind all the time. These, these are not huge lists. I have one or two things. What are we working on for devotions at the time as a family? Um, what are we working on for service or character? What family activities do I really want to focus on? Like maybe I want to focus on trying to make one-on-one -on -one time with my kids. Or maybe we want to um, you know, make sure we go out and do a picnic once a week during the summer. I don't know. We put that in there. Self-care because you know we are going to forget about self-care right away. So I have to put those in there or I will forget to take care of myself and I will get run down and be completely ineffective. So I put those in there. I put notes. I always have more things to say. Down here on the left, I put group work. So I sketch out what we do for our group work. And basically for us, that means morning time, what we do in the morning during breakfast. And then we also do a little bit of group work in, um, in the afternoon during lunch and then right after lunch. So I write out what we do for those and um, just so I can kind of keep in mind what our routines are, you know, there are days where I'm so tired, I just need, <laughs> I just need no, to know what to do next. So I have that here. Here's the daily tasks. So these are the things that I want to make sure I do every day to make our homeschool and our homemaking run, run smoothly. You know, things, things like correcting papers or whatever it might be. I keep those here and I try to keep these very minimal, just a couple things. Um, if I have too many things on this page or too many things in a list, I will stop reading them because I'm that way. So I need to have it very simple, very minimal. Okay, so those are two different views of the weekly routines that you can use. This is the one I use. Okay, this must have been, that's what this flag was for. See, I'm totally remembering everything. <laughs> All right, so we sketch out our year at a glance, and that's when I do my quarterly. So right now, this is July, August, September, and then I have notes. For each quarter, I started to fill these out a little bit, but I haven't gotten very far yet. I do, because our year starts at the end of um, July, so right about now. So I, for each quarter, I write down what projects and units we're going to cover, what character issues we want to focus on, what field trips we want to do, and anything else, any other things. Like right now, we're finishing up our Bible Bee from, um, because we went at our own pace. So we're finishing that up. So we write those things out a very... Um, high level things I put things here that I'm going to need to prepare for or keep in mind or think about during that quarter just so I have it in mind to don't forget about it okay also in the planner you can use the calendar the calendar we changed to be a generic calendar you can use this in the editable forms of the calendar it's you can write them in or edit them it has birthdays anniversaries holidays special events notes I keep all of my information like this on um, iCal, um, or you could use Google Calendar or whatever. So I don't use this page, but I know some people like to have their whole thing in one planner, so I put that in there. Okay, so that's the quarterly planning. And then I have pages for project or unit pages. I sometimes will think, I want to do a, you know, a unit study on... Um, honesty or whatever with my kids and so I'll use this these pages to kind of flesh that out so I have in mind what resources I want to pull together um, what activities we want to do you know I might do some research online but I, I like to keep those pages on hand or we might do a unit study on 
jellyfish or whatever. So I just have these in my planner so that when we decide to pull those in and work on them, we can. So I have several of those in here. And then this is a big change. This was the big change for the calendar or for the planner in my opinion. So this is a two page view. And what we added is we added a monthly record. Before in the Relax Mom Homeschool Planner, we just had a weekly record and, uh, well, really three different views of a weekly record. And I'll show you guys those in a minute. But we also added a monthly record. And th that's because this is what I do now. I don't keep track every week of what we did. I just have one page right here where throughout the month or at the end of the month, I write down the things that we actually did. So I put milestones here, like maybe they completed a certain curriculum or they made some sort of breakthrough, or there was an aha moment, um, or whatever it was, and we will put that here. The memory work that we worked on, that's something I wanna keep track of, so the scriptures we memorize, the poems we memorize, all of those kind of things go here. The field trips and activities we did, the character and the life skills that we worked on, and I'll you know, maybe write down specific activities. Here's the work completed. Um, so I don't really see any reason, you know, your homeschool laws by state may vary. So you wanna keep that in mind to make sure you know your homeschool laws when it comes to recording and reporting. But for us, we're in Oregon. We don't have to keep detailed records of what we, you know, what we actually do during the month, but I wanna keep a simple record. And this is my simple record. So I write down the work that we completed and that might be, you know, maybe my son completed that unit study on honesty or, on jellyfish and so I write out that down here and then any other notes I want to keep I put down here and what we also added was a mother's journal so I have this on the left this is what I see on my um, desk every time every day this is basically what I see on the left is my record and on the right is my mother's journal I really have a hard time being um, intentional 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 about writing down memories and activities and even quotes from my kids. I'm not the best when it comes to those things and I want to be better at that. And so I realized that the best way I could do that is to insert that activity where I'm already doing stuff, where I'm already writing things down. So it made sense to me to have my homeschool record on one side and my mother's journal on the other side. So now when the kids do something really funny or I want to remember something that, you know, I think to myself, I'll remember that because I know I never will. I write it down in the memories. I also write down my prayers for my children. I'm praying for my children throughout the week, the day, the month, and I want to have those recorded. So prayers and memories. So this is what I see every day. Um, I want to mention some of the other views that we have. So the other types of records, so this is the monthly record. The other types of records we have are still there. Here's one of the weekly records. The weekly record has an, oh, just you sketch out the overview of your week, some notes, and then what you did Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and you write down the week. That um, was a really popular view. This is the weekly record I was using for a long time. It looks similar to the weekly routine, the old weekly routine, um, but basically it's, you have each day of the week and you have your subjects so you can write down what you're doing in there. And then finally, this is actually a two page view, but I had it, I accidentally printed it on one page, double sided, but you would have this page on this side and this page on this side, and it shows the subjects and the days of the week. And that um, is editable. There's an editable version of that. So you could have a two page view for more space to write down all the things you wanna accomplish if that's your preference. So those are the three weekly views. All right, that's pretty much it when it comes to the planner. I keep a tab up here for keeping where, track of where I am for the month or which month I'm on and then a tab over here so I can flip back to the um, year at a glance and my quarter record. And then um, I do have some pages in the back so I always have more to write and more to say, some notes with fun scriptures and things like that. And then the last piece is well, I guess it's the second to last piece. These pages are not in the planner because I, I don't keep them there, even though they're in the printable. These are daily prayers and blessings. So this is the daily prayers and blessings. It has a scripture for each day of the week um, and then a prayer. 
These are things I recite with my children every day. So on Monday, we recite the God Word Focus One, and we recite Matthew 6, 33, and I pray, pray this prayer and blessing over my family and over my children. We do this every day. It's become um, really an important part of our family culture and in blessing our family. These are the same scriptures, but in scripture card format, so you can cut them out and laminate them and memorize them together. Okay, so I keep these in my morning time binder because that's where... That's the first thing that I open and see every day. And then the last piece is um, daily task management. So for daily task management, we use um, loop scheduling. And I've talked about this before, and this is where that loop scheduling workshop comes in with lots more examples and ideas. But the gist of it is, I have, this, is, this one says homeschool routine. And this is, I also keep in my, um, morning time binder along with my daily prayers and blessings this is things you know i use this for my morning time loop so i'll write you know every day for morning time we're going to read bible we're going to recite our scripture passage for the day we're going to do memory lane where we review things and then in the loop de lose i might have these are the resources that i want to cycle through so i would do these and then maybe i would pick up something from the loop and read that for the morning time so that's what that is. You can use that in a variety of different ways and the loop scheduling workshop will go through all of those for you, but that's how I'm using it at the moment. I'm always changing things. This is the student routine loop. Each of my older kids has their own student routine loop and basically they have the things they do every day and they have the loop de loos And so, you know, um, again, the loop scheduling workshop goes through it and I will leave you a link where you can see a video that talks more about loop scheduling as well and gives you some of the free templates. Um, but basically, they, I write down the things they're going to do every day, like they're going to do math and reading and writing, and etc. And then in loop de lose, I might add extra things, like he's going to work on an engineering course, he's going to work on um, an inquiry project, he's going to you know, do a creative writing piece or whatever, and, and he would pick one or two of these depending on what I specify. And so here, he would write math, and each day he would check off math. Right, and he would go down the list like this. I'm gonna get all my loop, all my daily dues done. And then the next day he would go down the next column. The loop dude lose, the way this works is I might have a list of like three or four things. I say, okay, you complete your daily dues for the day and then you do maybe one of your loop de lose. So he does the next one, whatever's next on the list, um, or you could do it, um, you could have him pick and choose what they want if you want. But I like to do it in order because then if I want him to do something more than once a week, then I would put that item in twice. And so I have them go in order. So he would do one item, maybe his inquiry project, and then he would check that off. And the next day he would do his engineering course and he would check that off. And so this is what they do to keep track of their work. Um, they don't really need a whole lot of input on, from me on what they're gonna do next. They just touch base with me when they need one-on-one -on -one attention. And that is basically how we do it. And that, my friends, is the Rhythms and Routines Homeschool Planning System. And just so you know, we have, I wanna show you this really quick. This is where we actually put our loops. So this is the wall behind me, this is in our dining room. We have a basic family calendar, and then down here on clipboards, I just tack these to the wall. So they can come up and, and this was important to me because they don't get lost now. So they go up and they check off what they wanna do. All right, I hope that helps you guys. Please let me know if you have any questions or if there's anything you wanted more information on. I am happy to help you. Thanks, bye.